An astronaut just said something about SpaceX's Dragon that's got Russia's Soyuz veterans raising eyebrows. And trust me, it's not what you'd expect. We're talking about a comparison so shocking, it boils down to this. Pressing a button versus understanding the physics behind it. Today, we're diving into a rare, first-hand account from astronaut Kimia Yui, who's flown on Soyuz and will fly on SpaceX's Dragon. And what he said has stirred the pot between old space and new space. Is modern spaceflight turning astronauts into passengers? Or is this the smartest evolution in spacecraft design we've ever seen? Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. To truly grasp how SpaceX has revolutionized the space industry, let's hear from someone who's been there, JAXA astronaut Kimia Yui, who will serve as a mission specialist in the upcoming SpaceX Crew 11. Reflecting on his experience, he shared, In Russia, in Soyuz, we still have a very traditional training education system. So, for example, if we have some need to learn how a microwave works in Russia, you would be taught the physics of how a microwave works or something like that. But if you, in the United States, you just press this button and just set timers. This simple yet powerful comparison captures the essence of the difference in astronaut training philosophies. Some learn how it works and others just learn what to do. Let's dive deeper into Russia's Soyuz training program. When Yui flew aboard the Soyuz in 2015, he experienced firsthand how rigorous and technically demanding the Russian space training is. Before teaching you which buttons to press, Russian trains you in the underlying physics and engineering. The microwave example might seem simple, but it represents something profound. Russian astronauts must understand the science behind every system. In reality, when pilots practice docking in Soyuz, they spend a lot of time learning manual controls and spacecraft physics so they can fly and fix the ship themselves if needed. Or for emergencies, Russian astronauts study the spacecraft's life support and systems inside out, understanding why things work and how to troubleshoot deeply. It's not just about operation, it's about becoming a mechanic and a scientist in one. This philosophy is born out of necessity. Russian hardware is known for being complex and mechanically intricate. Unlike SpaceX's Dragon, which is designed for simplicity and integration. The Soyuz spacecraft is made up of three separate modules, the orbital, descent, and service modules. Only the descent module makes it back to Earth, while the others burn up during re-entry. This modular design adds layers of complexity to both mission planning and in-flight procedures. Soyuz uses a docking system called KERS, which relies on a mechanical probe and drogue system. While it's capable of automated docking, astronauts are still required to be fully trained in manual docking techniques in case something goes wrong, another example of the Russian approach to always being prepared to take control. And this complexity isn't just limited to the spacecraft itself. The Soyuz rocket is also an engineering feat. It features a launch escape tower to ensure crew safety during emergencies and utilizes a multi-stage design with clustered boosters. The launch sequence involves precise timing and coordination, including side booster separation and overlapping upper stage firings, all adding to its operational demands. The Soyuz system has been in continuous service since 1967, making it the world's longest serving crewed spacecraft design. Over the decades, it's gone through several iterations, TM, TMA, MS, each bringing improvements like more efficient solar panels, digital systems, and safer landings. However, these upgrades have also led to an accumulation of legacy systems and protocols, making training even more complex. Once the mission is over, re-entry and landing come with their own challenges. Unlike newer spacecraft with precision landings, Soyuz re-entries can be rough. Although improvements have reduced impact forces to about 5G, astronauts still endure intense deceleration and landing sites can be off by hundreds of kilometers due to unpredictable winds, requiring rapid and well-coordinated recovery efforts. All of this paints a vivid picture of the Russian approach to spaceflight. Deep, methodical, and heavily grounded in technical expertise. It's a sharp contrast to the user-friendly, touchscreen simplicity of SpaceX's spacecraft, showcasing just how far modern spaceflight has come. SpaceX's training is focused on practical use. 
You don't need a PhD to operate the spacecraft. You're taught what buttons to press, how to navigate emergencies, and how to stay safe without diving deep into the physics behind it all. To put it in astronaut Kimiya Yui's words, in Russia, if you want to use a microwave, you learn the electromagnetic science behind how it heats food. In the US, you just learn to press start and trust the machine. And that's by design. Crew Dragon was built to be autonomous. It flies itself, docks itself, and monitors itself. If something goes wrong, ground control steps in. Only in rare cases do astronauts need to take manual control. So instead of spending years learning to fly the thing manually, astronauts train for the critical just-in-case moments. And get this, instead of being surrounded by thousands of physical switches, analog gauges, and confusing panels, Crew Dragon uses touchscreen controls and clean, minimalist displays. It's like flying a spacecraft built by Apple. Why? Because simplicity saves lives. In high-stress situations like during a malfunction or emergency, you don't want astronauts digging through complex manuals or trying to remember which of a thousand switches saves the day. You want systems that are intuitive, reliable, and forgiving. And SpaceX nailed it. Dragon's systems are packed with redundancies and fault-tolerant software that automatically detects and fixes problems before they become disasters. It's like flying with a built-in safety net. The core philosophy here is efficiency and accessibility. SpaceX engineered Dragon, so astronauts, whether they're career scientists, doctors, or even civilians, can fly missions without needing to become aerospace engineers. And that's huge. That's what opens the door to a future where space is not just for professional astronauts, but for everyone. So here's the bottom line. While Russian spacecraft are designed for astronauts who can fix their own oxygen systems with a wrench, SpaceX builds its ships for smart, capable passengers, people who know what to do, not necessarily why it works. And that brings me to you. If you had the chance to go to space, would you want to train like a Russian cosmonaut, mastering every system inside and out, or would you rather relax in a touchscreen powered seat on a spacecraft that practically flies itself? Drop your answer in the comments below. Anyway, if you love this deep dive, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the bell. We're aiming for 150,000 subscribers, and we need you to get there. Space isn't just for astronauts anymore, and maybe it's your turn next. Now, everything we just talked about, the sleek interfaces, the intuitive controls, the shift toward letting the ship fly itself, none of that happened by accident. This didn't come naturally. What we're seeing today is the direct result of a massive transformation from what we call old space to new space, a shift driven by commercial powerhouses like SpaceX. Back in the day, NASA's training model looked a lot like Russia's deep, intense, and rooted in theory. It wasn't about pushing buttons. It was about understanding why every single system worked the way it did. From Mercury to Gemini, Apollo to shuttle, NASA astronauts went through years of foundational training. We're talking full-blown academics, spacecraft engineering, orbital mechanics, manual control, deep dive emergency protocols. It was hardcore. Take the space shuttle, for example. That beast had thousands of switches, buttons, and circuit breakers. Pilots didn't just fly it, they had to manage complex systems mid-mission, perform rendezvous and docking, handle repairs, and switch to manual controls if anything went sideways. And it didn't stop at the cockpit. NASA's legendary motto was, train like you fly. That meant every simulation, every drill, every emergency scenario was as realistic and intense as the actual mission. They trained for land survival, water survival, crash landings, you name it. Astronauts weren't just mission specialists, they were engineers, pilots, and problem solvers rolled into one. Fast forward to today, and the game has changed. NASA is still deeply involved, but when it comes to flying modern spacecraft like Crew Dragon, commercial providers are now in charge of the hands-on training. And the focus has shifted from mastering the inner workings to simply knowing what to do and when. This new space approach is designed around efficiency, automation, and let's be real, scalability. You don't need to memorize thousands of systems anymore. You learn the protocols, the procedures, 
and how to respond with the support of an intelligent, automated vehicle, and veteran astronauts who flew both the Space Shuttle and Dragon. They're loving it. Doug Hurley, who flew on both systems, said the difference is night and day. On the shuttle, flying required constant attention and a crew of two or three to manage its 2,000 switches and circuit breakers. With Dragon? Dragon is much more automated. It's a cleaner crew module. There's less interaction with the vehicle, he said. It's just learning a different plane as a pilot. Flying is kind of the same. And that's the key. The job is the same, but the way you do it has evolved. We've gone from astronauts being mechanics, engineers, and scientists to being high-level operators in a smart, automated cockpit. It's like going from flying a Boeing 747 manually to sitting in a Tesla that can land itself on the moon. NASA's traditional astronaut training is packed with deep scientific theory, reflecting the agency's focus on exploration, safety, and mission success. Over in Russia, their training philosophy takes cues from legendary thinkers, like Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, who believed that mastering physics and engineering was essential for venturing into space. This mindset created a culture where cosmonauts weren't just taught to push buttons. They were expected to understand the intricate workings of their spacecraft inside and out. Historically, the Soviet space program developed under a tightly controlled political system that treated space tech as both a military asset and a symbol of national strength. This meant cosmonauts were trained not just as pilots, but as highly skilled engineers capable of solving problems on the fly, even without automated systems. Their rigorous theoretical education mirrored the intense, military-like standards of the era. Russian cosmonaut training also weaves in powerful traditions rooted in Soviet ideals, honoring courage, discipline, and patriotic service. It's a demanding journey that emphasizes not just brains and brawn, but a strong cultural identity shaped by notions of masculinity and heroism. At the heart of all this is the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, established in 1960. While it continues to evolve with modern practices, it still holds tightly to the legacy of Soviet pioneers. The result? Cosmonauts who are not only technically prepared, but deeply connected to the history and traditions of spaceflight. Last but certainly not least, the Soyuz spacecraft itself follows a design philosophy favoring robust manual control and redundancy over automation. Cosmonauts need to understand the physics and mechanics behind each system to be ready for manual intervention during anomalies. Training reflects this, emphasizing fundamental principles and system-level comprehension to prepare crews for such hands-on operations.